So a couple of weeks ago, I took a look at building dynamic keyframes in an Angular 10 application. And in the video for that post, I mentioned that the animation timing function was applied to the entire life cycle of the animation. Uh, that was an assumption on my part. It turns out that assumption was quite wrong. And as I just learned from Una Kravitz in the latest CSS podcast episode on animations, animation timing functions are actually applied per keyframe. So to correct that mental model and demonstrate this functionality, I created a cubic bezier curve from uh, cubicbezier.com, I think it is, uh, by Leah Verlu. And what this is going to do is bounce uh, a dot past a particular left. So we have a track here. We have the dot that we're going to be animating. And you can see it starts out at the left, and then it goes to about a third, and then about two thirds, and then finally all the way to the right. And what we're going to see is that this cubic bezier curve is applied per left, not just per the uh, entire life cycle of the, app, of the animation. So if we jump over to the browser, let's just refresh. So you can see how it bounces past these markers and eventually bounces past the end of the animation as well. And what we're clearly seeing here is that that cubic bezier curve that has the bounce effect is being applied per keyframe, not simply to the entire uh, configuration of the animation. So a uh, small but very critical error in my mental model, and hopefully now I will uh, uh, be able to correct this going forward.